Udro, if you'd like to record, you can. Do I see the option for you? I don't see the option for you, George. I do see the option for you, Dread. George, I don't know what's your connection, but whatever happens, I can't see your permission to record option on your screen. I Damn. have, um, well, you know, I'm in Linux and that may be why. Hmm. Um, I don't have the same interface that you guys do. Yeah, I'm you're showing, on Linux. That's probably it. That's probably it. That I, I'm sense. showing a, a flashing icon in the left top corner of my screen. It says Rec. There's a little green something next to it. That'll be it. Click on that. Yeah, if you push it, that's where the aliens come out. Okay, but I don't want to record it. So <laughs> it's, it's, I'll it's just fun. watch it on YouTube. It's the guys, you guys can record it. It's the Boudreau, can I? You put you press that and everything is wrecked. Can I hear you make some noise, Boudreau? Just to make sure you're ready. Check, in. check, check. Sounds good to me. I think everyone's level. Nice. Uh, I'm ready to begin the show. Larry, are you? Uh, I reckon. What's today? Right. The uh... 14th today is the 14th dread are you doing your live stream uh yes okay i'll give you the six count and then you can have the link six five four three two hello and welcome to the digital free thought radio hour on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm right here in knoxville tennessee we're recording this on sunday morning november 14th 2021 i'm larry rhodes or doubter five and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. I need B-batteries. No, I don't have a stutter. B-batteries. Uh, B-batteries. <laughs> okay, cool. Welcome to the show. Uh, also, we have guests, uh, George Brown, the two and a half. How are you? Originally oh, I, from I, Brooklyn. I, rem I remember what B-batteries were because I bought one once. Uh, I don't remember for, for, for my yeah they were used in uh, portable radios you had to power the plates of the tubes wow. with a B battery they were Must very have been a big expensive one. yes it was a big one and boy I saved my allowance for like six weeks at least <laughs> to, to buy it oh wow now you yeah. can't find them anywhere no Dread no oh, of welcome. course all the uh, way from ahoy. Canada oh I and the John Richards from across the pond in Britain. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. Mm -hmm. And if you think you're the only non believer in town, well, you're just not. There are hundreds, literally a thousand at least, in Knoxville, and we have a group. For you, we'll tell you how you can reach that group, maybe join later on in the show. But right now, Wombat, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to be talking about the structure of the universe. Why not? Because. Why, sure, because we can. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Why not? Also, before we get into the meat, real meat and potatoes of it, we're going to throw it up to Rowan Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. All right. I'm going to change this out to a little bit. Our one creator, which flies and is spaghetti and a monster. I believe thou art the creator of goodness and nourishment and of sustenance. I thank the pasta and the sauce and the meatballs, for they provide me all my needs. I thank thee for the many beverages that thou provides, for they engender true fellowship. And I will quaff them heartily, be they beer or wine or sweet iced tea or even milk or Kool-Aid. For it is not good to withhold fluids, and I need to take care of my body as beneficiary of thy holy goodness. I thank thee for giving the healthy green salad, the yummy garlic bread, and the blessed cheese for the top of my spaghetti. And also I am most thankful that if I eat all my dinner, a dessert of extreme chocolatiness will surely follow, preferably dark chocolate, for it is good. I believe that thou art neither male nor female, but are instead beyond the reaches of gender confusion of man and womankind. Yea, thou art ageless, timeless, and all-encompassing. I most thank, humbly thank thee, O nudely appendage one, for touching me with a mental capacity to adapt the mythologies of this universe to aid and comfort me here, 
until the day that I'm able to join together with my Pastafarian brothers and sisters at the foot of the beer volcano and enumerate my specifications at the stripper factory so that happiness and contentedness and good cheer be present for all. Forever and ever, Raw. Raw, man. man, guys. Listen, B batteries are hard to find. You want to know why? Because it's too many A batteries taking up too many slots. You started with A, you think B, C, D. It's like, no, A, then double A, then triple A. It's like, calm down, A batteries. Make mm. room for all the other batteries. What are you doing? Uh, it's crazy. There's no structure. So speaking of structure, Dred, I heard, I heard you wanted to talk about structure of the universe today. Well, uh, yeah, in so, in so many terms, I guess. Um, so the anthropic principle, um, I don't know if you guys have uh, had a look at it to see uh, what it's all about, but um, it was proposed uh, by um, this uh, fellow called, uh, named uh, Brandon Carter in 1973, which so happened to be the 500th anniversary of uh, Copernicus. Okay. And uh, so essentially, um, and, and unfortunately, the anthropic principle is probably misnamed, um, but it's been abused, of course, by uh, all kinds of uh, persons with religious bents in order to justify um, their uh, positions that uh, an intelligent designer had to uh, be the, essentially the creator of the universe. But uh, I'll give you the weak anthropic principle, and it's we must be prepared to take account of the fact that our location in the universe is necessarily privileged to the extent of being compatible with our existence as observers. Right. Like you have to you have to respect that if you're in a puddle shaped hole and, you, and you're a puddle in it. Yes. Things are pretty complementary with each other. Totally That's fine. Right. The way right. how I understood anthropic principle was okay. uh, we're in a universe that's heading towards disorder. Just entropically speaking, things are moving towards disorder, which meant we had to come from a place of order. So you can see some order in the universe, right? And we have to recognize that in order for us to recognize that we're moving to a state of disorder. And I've heard religious people you know, flip that on its head and be like, well, therefore God. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying we have to start from somewhere to get towards disorder, which is where entropy is moving towards. Like mm -hmm. we can measure that. And entropy, anthropy, I guess was what I'm hearing. Uh, Bujo, go for it. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm wondering, is this a coincidence? Or are we confusing terms here? Anthropic is the term dread pirates talking about, which is with an A and it's, it's, ah. it's, it's like, like a human in nature, yes. right? Yep. Anthropomorphic. Okay. I have literally heard in, of entropy. En entropic. entropic yes, process. That, that is the condition of the universe is the yeah, move, so. second, law, second law of ther thermodynamics. Is then I'll that, back uh, off. I'll back off. I'll yeah, take my yeah, science yeah. hat and put it away. Thank you. Thank you, Boudreau. Thank you, Dredd. So yeah. anthropic principle just is what in the, like, in the most layman's terms possible? Well, it's the idea that uh, in order for us to observe the universe, the universe must have conditions which allow for life to exist some people have said have changed that um, to say the universe must have conditions for intelligent life to exist and therefore mm -hmm. it's a it's a post hoc or go uh, uh propter hoc uh, fallacy so people have put the horse before the cart in order to right. justify a religious uh belief yeah and and to be honest with you, I don't have a problem with the anthropic principle whatsoever. It seems like that yeah. makes total sense, but it doesn't answer any of the extending questions that a Christian or a religious person would use to support their God belief because mm -hmm. it doesn't re re represent anything supernatural or necessitate any sort of explanation about how a God is, uh, is a necessary construct in a universe where we still can't observe him right. or her. Or anything yeah. like that well a, a very interesting thing and, and people of course ask why have an anthropic principle in the first place if it's really just a truism um and it actually uh some fruit came of this uh, uh principle in the form of um stephen weiberg's uh, prediction of the uh, uh energy level of a vacuum and uh there were calculations made of what that value might be, um, which were 
really, really quite high. And then Steven Weinberg said, well, the fact that we exist means that there's a limit on what that energy level could be. And it was later found out, you know, 15 years later that when with the discovery of dark energy, that mm. uh, in fact, it was within the limits that he said were necessary based on the anthropic principle. It was really mm. cool, really cool. John, I'll throw this out at you. What do you think about the necroctic principle, like uh, Strett's saying, like dead bodies coming back to life and taking <laughs> over everybody? <laughs> Well, well, that was there. that was that was a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> well, one did, according to most of the people in Christianity. <laughs> no, there's two even in that book, Lazarus. Yeah. Oh, there's like, a it's whole not book. even a unique. Yeah. It's not even if a unique magic trick as far as out of, people that came up out of the grave, you know, uh, yeah. during his yeah. crucifixion. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. resurrection. Yeah. Yeah. So like they were wandering all over the place, yeah. weren't they? Since uh, you know, you, this cart before the horse thing, there was it fine tuning, you know, before so that we would exist or we exist because it was fine tuning. Oh, I, I think that since our planet is in like the Goldilocks zone, you know, yeah. well, between too hot and too cold, we're right there in the cool. For us, God must be yeah. Goldilocks. I mean, all hail Goldilocks. <laughs> I mean, following that, <laughs> that uh, example there. It, and you know, I, I, I've heard about that Goldilocks zone idea. The thing is um, that shifts as the sun gets older or younger, oh, sure. right? Mm -hmm. And so like, what, if anything, what's really scary or what's really interesting, I wouldn't say scary, what would be really fascinating is if we did see signs of life on Mars, if we were able to observe that to the extent where we can mm -hmm. actually see, these are the building blocks necessary to make life. This is water flowing, but it's all dead now because that Goldilocks zone shifted away. And you're like, oh, well then what we are looking at right now at our solar system is just a snapshot of where life could have been and we're just in that magical zone of where life could be and it's shifting away yeah. and if we don't get, <laughs> if we didn't need another timeline to get our acts together and be like once this ships out of the way earth is done and we have to figure out another place where you yeah. know if we're going to survive yeah. actually the prediction is that uh, in a billion years the sun would because it is increasing in output that in a billion years uh, the earth will be completely uninhabitable <sighs> larry start packing oh uh, i can't hear you my friend larry sorry larry. um they say that within five billion years the the earth i mean the, the sun will have swollen so far that the earth the road the orbit of the earth will be inside the sun yes yeah. so uh that means that the goldilocks zone may very well shift all the way out to like jupiter and its moons may be the inhabited areas we or it could mean that Suntan City will finally release some coupons finally. Yeah. You can't ever find anything on Groupon for them. Yeah. Pudra, sorry you, for you, how many moons do you think Jupiter has right now? I don't know. Uh, 36. 70 something. Wow. Get and, out. No, wow. And Saturn has about as many. So mm. there's huge amount of moons out there. They're in a little show off with each other. You know, yeah. that's what happens when one person gets a robot yeah. vacuum. The other person well, has to get a robot vacuum. And next, you know, they're just competing with each yeah. other. Well, maybe Boston. Neil deGrasse Tyson will do a thing like he did with Pluto and just declare them non moons or mini moons or something like that. Oh, that'll make me upset. <laughs> Keep our moons the way they were. Keep the solar system great. 79 moons. John, what's up? Well, I don't really see that there's anything to discuss here because. It's a truism that we exist, hmm. and and maybe we're not in a position to deduce how things were before we existed. Yeah, and maybe if things were different, then perhaps we wouldn't exist as Homo sapiens, but some other intel intelligent creature may have come to exist, hmm. and who knows? And if you if you plot this forward. I mean, what would we be saying about the anthropic principle if the sun had just engulfed the earth? That doesn't sound very anthropic to me. <laughs> the, the issue is, is like, it's a slippery slope that works both ways. And mm. in the same sense that a Christian can try to mangle that into a way to prove that a God exists, mm. in a much more fundamental notion, the tools that we are using to observe the universe are the same ones that we're using to, that we apply to science and are just as uh, verifiable as the ones that we use to come up with basic observations about how the universe works in the first place to even come up with that principle. Mm. And none of those systems 
point towards a supernatural being control in control of everything. Mm-hmm. And I think the main takeaway is the fundamental truth is the 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 veracity of hey I have to be able to observe the universe and the universe has to be observable. True. What are we seeing? I don't see a god. I don't see angels. I don't see heaven. I don't see devils and stuff like that. Uh, jinns, spirits, mm-hmm. fairies. What am I seeing? Okay, what's the best way to see it? And it's always going to be science at the end of the day in terms of the best way to know and see things. Dread, what's up? Well, I, w- I was just going to say the reason I wanted to, to talk about it at all was that it is uh, an argument that, uh, you know, those of religious faiths use to uh, justify their position and can often come up in conversations that you're having with someone uh, about this if they're mm. you know, even moderately scientifically uh, literate. <clears throat> um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a, a good argument to know about in order to defend against it. So that, uh, you know, you can point out the fact that, you know, you know, someone says, well, there must be a God because how do you, how, how else do you explain the fine tuning? Well, ah. fine tuning, you know, is, is just blown out of the water when you actually examine the anthropic principle as it was, uh, as it was developed and not as how it was uh, misrepresented and misinterpreted. Yeah. And my takeaway from that is if anyone says, well, how, of course it's this, because how else could you explain that? I say never take the, wheat, the bait and start arguing about that because they're not right by default. So force them to take the burden of evidence to say, yes, well, exactly. how does this being unsatisfactory make this true? Perfect. Explain that link to me and then I'll follow along. But exactly. I'm not here to defend or attack any of the things that you find ludicrous. That's up to you to figure out. Draw me the connection from your conclusion to your belief. Yes. But yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. What's up, Bujo? Sorry. I, I really like your opening response to this, the, the puddle, you know, the idea if there's a if there's a, a hole in some crazy shape and the water fills it, you know, the water could be like, I perfectly fit, I perfectly fill this hole. It's amazing. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you fill it because you know that it, you, the, you, that's the shape of it. So it, the, the fine tuning to me is it, it just comes out of well, all of the the existence of life that tried to occur but died off because it couldn't well it wasn't tuned for them so they never got to observe it yeah i was uh, i was invited to speak on the voice of islam radio station a week just over a week ago and um one of the questions that they asked me was what how what is the atheist explanation for the or- origin of yeah, the universe and life and everything. And I, I have to point out that being an atheist is simply not being convinced by the belief systems of assorted believers. It's not a specialist knowledge about the origin right. of the universe. Right. You can't expect somebody as a result of their atheism to be able to answer mysteries that scientists can't solve. So, but this is a strange thing. They have come to an, a, 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 a result. They have, they have got an explanation for the origin of everything, but they don't have any evidence for it. And that doesn't seem to bother them. Yeah. I mean, I got to say it's one of the most frustrating things but also the most telling thing that most people who are religious know what an atheist is from other religious people. Yes. And so the, one of the best things about being an atheist is being open about your atheism so that people know who to talk to when it comes to getting good information. Yeah. Cause I can't tell you the number of times I told someone I'm an atheist and then I have to immediately dismantle what their impression of what an atheist is yes. given to them either by their pastor or yes. by a loved one who was religious yes. and say, no, no, Larry eats babies, but I don't. Larry, what's up? <laughs> That's a true Scotsman fallacy. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, it really doesn't matter what we say. I mean, uh, created the universe. We could say it was uh, pixies. We could say yes. the, the universe creating pixies created it. And then they would laugh at it and say it's silly. And it would be silly. But the thing about it is they never they uh, demand all this evidence and reason from atheists about the creation of the universe, but they don't demand any evidence or reason for the, their own explanation that their mm-hmm. priests, preachers, and moms, and et cetera, give them. There is no evidence at all given to them as long as they believe that they feel like they're in like Flynn. Yeah. Hey, 
What's up, Dred? Uh, I was just going to say, and and that you know really is the basis of Pastafarianism, is that uh, it it really serves as as good an explanation for the creation of the universe as any god yeah. at any time ever did. And yeah. and so while people may you know point at us and and say, well, we're just out there to make fun of everyone. No, no, we just make fun of ourselves. And uh, mm -hmm. the fact that we just, it's as good an explanation as any, and, and we're just not that invested uh, in it as other people are in their own gods. So there you go. Raman. Yeah. Uh, so I'm also going to throw this one out too. I like this as my uh, snarky retort, but when someone tells me, you know, like atheists, they don't believe in anything. It's like, I'm just saying, I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's the only thing i don't believe all right uh so we had a whole list of other topics that we're going to want to go through today uh all brought to us by our own john richards john richards do you have that short list do you want me to prompt you a little bit uh well i um this is prompted by a conversation that i had it was an it was an original post in the facebook group unbelievable question mark and it's it was on about um, if we if we had some other god, would we feel the need to glorify him? And and my comment was, why? What is this need to glorify? I mean, are you congenitally subservient? Why do you want to why do you want to worship anything or anybody? And are you lacking in self esteem? And of course, it occurred. Oh, all to the me, questions at once. Yes, all the well, questions it, that one. They're they're all related <laughs> because it occurred to me that one of the things that religions do when they're bringing up, when they're inducting their children into their faith, is they destroy their self esteem. <laughs> so that then it, you've got to look up to the authority, whether it's a parent or priest or an imam or whoever, and believe well, them, saying. and and. Uh, accept their authority and then the hierarchy goes right up to him in the sky where are you getting this from all all christians do is teach your kids to be absolutely blindly uh subservient sing songs about how they're the sheep and the other people are the shepherd uh and be recognized that they're sinners and there's something fundamentally wrong with them that only god can solve how does that affect their self-esteem <laughs> well i just don't know <laughs> it's a mystery one of the, God works in mysteries, by the way. <laughs> Dred, did you did you want to? Yeah, ask? well, you, you know, uh, just speaking to to uh, John's comments there, um, you know, of course, back in uh, you know Roman and, and Greek uh, times and Babylonians and all the rest of them, uh, the uh, the gods were much more human like. Uh, they were you know fickle and you know had a lot of. Uh, you know, um, you know, they suffered the vicissitudes of, divi uh, uh, you know, the divine sort of thing, I guess, but um, they were much more human. And, uh, you know, the uh, more recent elevation of uh, a divine Perfection. entity into a single, a single thing is uh, authoritarian and totalitarian, oh. uh, as opposed to, you know, the gods of uh, those other civilizations, which were much more interactive. Um, you could you could be a you know a, a servant to uh, Venus or you could be a servant to Ather Aphrodite or Zeus. You didn't have to buy into all of it. You know, it's an interesting thing because I actually find solo gods or monotheistic religions to be most almost a re better representation of humanity in 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 long form structure. Because if I were to ask. Uh, an absolute narcissist to write a book about how awesome he was or how awesome she was. It probably looked like the Bible. Right. It probably looked exactly like the Bible. It's like, well, I just made 10 rules. I made some mistakes, but it was their fault. And I killed everything and I started it up again. And then I said, don't, don't you dare think about banging my wife. Again, again, again. One third of the 10 rules you're not supposed to do. And I'm just like, oh, this guy is crazy. It's like, and then at the end, there's going to be a giant war and everything's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. It'll be tremendous, terrific. I guarantee it. It's going to be amazing. Don't take your vaccines. <laughs> and slavery is okay. I mean, like, yeah. you're, that, that is humanity in a sense, 
it, the the true mirror in my head but when i see the uh the pantheon of gods yeah there's a lot of bickering and, and a lot of like siding and you can pick your favorite ones to go with i definitely see that too larry what's up i was just gonna say uh it sounds like uh uh narcissus wrote it himself because he was writing about himself right but it was it was actually written by the priests who were trying to push belief in that person so it's like uh you know your best friend is a mafia boss you know you better do what i say or my my friend will kick your butt you know <laughs> you know he's awesome let me tell you all the things yeah. he can do but he's my best friend and i inter- i re- re- what is it re- uh, it's like um my my dad will kick your dad's butt <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know at the end of the day it's like that story with the emperor's new clothes it's essentially two guys walk in and they're like hey you must be stupid or else you'd be able to see this fabric because only smart people right. can see this fabric. Yeah. And the guy's yeah. like, I guess I've got to see the fabric too. Yeah, put them on. And they're just literally selling them false hope, false yeah, clothes, yeah. all this stuff, uh, false yeah. sense of confidence. Yeah. And you're just walking down the streets naked, but everyone can't laugh at them because then they'll act yeah. as if they're stupid too. And it's uh-huh. only the innocence of a child with a true untainted skepticism without being indoctrinated into like one sort of confidence system or the next to be mm-hmm. honestly laughing at the guy. But in the actual story, he, the kid doesn't exist. The, the story just ends with the whole town being subservient to these two, you know, con artists in a sense. And I'm like, when you see a story like that, how do you not automatically see the religious as- applications behind it? But yet there are a lot of Christians who have like complete cognitive dissonance on that uh, concept. Truman Show as well. Jim Carrey, a wonderful yep. example of like, how could you not uh-huh. see the allegory here? Like, it's so right. bizarrely obvious, like. The director's name was Christian. It's crazy. Anyway, Larry, I think we're at the bottom of the half of the show. We are. Hey, this has been the Digital Free Thought Radio, our first half anyway. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going to take a break for a short minute here. And we'll be right back after this. See you then. Cool. So we are paused up. Anthropic oh. principle. Oh. Hey, uh, three, two. Hello, and welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dotter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, which was founded in 2002. We're in our 19th year. Next year will be the big one. ASK has over 1,000 members, and we have weekly in-person uh, meetings at Knoxville's Old City at the Barley's Tap Room in Pizzeria. Look for us out on the patio. If you'd like to join our Tuesday evening Zoom meeting, however, or email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com. You can find us online at, not, I'm sorry, Facebook, meetup.com or at knoxvilleatheist.org or just Google Knoxville Atheists. You'll find us. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meet up and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Start one. Start one. That's right. Where do you want to pick up one? Bet. Hey, we're going to throw it up to our own Boudreaux, who's going to give us a rundown on marketing 101 strategy. <laughs> yes. I'm uh, <clears throat> no, I yeah, I think maybe uh what I'd love to do is is share a, a marketing uh tool campaign that a, a local mega church here in Lexington has been using. And if anyone watching our live streams from this area, they might have seen this and uh, or may have even wondered what it was. But so many of you are familiar with the, um, if, if, if any runners out there, if, if you run a, you know, a, a half marathon or a marathon, you get a, a white oval sticker and you put it on your car, right? Seeing that? Yeah, twenty six point two. You put the you put the sticker on, and you know that means you you're basically telling everyone that's reading the sticker that yes, I have run this distance. You know, I'm proud of it. It was a it was a big effort, and you know I've got a thirteen one in my car. I'm super proud of. Haven't made a marathon yet, but that's just you know. Well, the uh, mega church here in town has a sticker just like that, except it says twenty seven point two. Oh no! Because they want to go the extra mile, right? <laughs> no, so, yeah, it's it's a mile longer than twenty six point two, and with the exception of a little bit of writing underneath the 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 number, the number is big enough to read from a driver's seat, 
behind them. But you can't read the little fine print that says, you know, you know, the name of the church. And, and just looking on the website, it looks like what they're basically doing is like, hey, put this sticker on your car and it, it signifies that you're going the extra mile. And to me, it, what it signifies is that whether you've run a marathon or not, you're putting on the sticker and surely you're fooling some people into thinking you've run a marathon, which seems to be terribly dishonest. Until they get out of the car and you're like, no, no, no. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> so I don't know. Reaction. That's all I want to say about it. I'm just, I'm really curious what people think. So a while back ago, I had a conversation with a guy when I was doing SE in Kentucky. And, and, and Kentucky was one of the best places I ever did uh, street epistemology or Socratic examination interviews at. And the conversation that was at hand was, can people who don't skateboard wear skateboard t-shirts? Mm -hmm. And I had a very fascinating discussion with this guy because he was an older person, but had grown up in the culture of skateboarding and had a proud skateboard shirt on. And he's like, I don't think people who skateboard. And I was like, well, you look kind of old. Like, well, I'm not old because I have this. And because <laughs> I did this and he gave me the whole explanation. And so I'm thinking like, is it worth the, how do I put this? Is it worth getting upset if someone need, needs to even lie to themselves in a sense to look good? And, and, or is it better off to just know what you're good at, what you're capable of, and whether you choose to represent it or not, be happy with that. But I feel like that is the human condition because just because someone else says, I ran a marathon and they didn't, just say, just say they bought a car that had the sticker on it and they didn't want to take it off. Like I can find that being really upsetting to people who routinely do Ironmans and stuff like that. It'd be like, take that sticker off. You don't deserve it. It's like, does this really bother you? Who's the victim here? Like, is this really false valor or is there something else going on here? And is that a human condition thing? And can it be applied to religion? Absolutely. How many people have I seen wearing crosses on their, on their, you know, chest with necklaces and doing horrendous things in mugshots or like stuff like that. So what are we going to, where are we going to draw the line? I say it may not even be worth it. That's my two cents. Dread, what? sounds like you yeah. want to weigh on this? No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> John Richards, what's up? Well, a couple of things here. First, first of all, I think, like most advertising, it's an attempt to deceive. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I was trying to say, I mean, they're in the business of false advertising. Exactly. Aren't they? Okay, advertising I'm gonna, is, is it, is it advertising? Exist. Yeah. Is it advertising or is it makeup at the certain point? Like, it's just, is it a cosmetic enhancement that they're doing to just look a little bit better in public? And is makeup advertising and is that deceiving? I don't know. But Well, well what's the purpose of it? What's the purpose of, the, of putting the sticker on your car? Well, I think that's, it's to... That's well, something else from, that I was going it's, it's signaling. Yes, yes. So yes. It, it's like... It's like waving the flag and saying, oh, look at me. I am yes, so yes. patriotic. Yes. I am yes. more patriotic than you are. Yes, yeah, yes. it's hand waving. Yeah. So that was I love be. America so, so much. I, I put an know. American flag next to my yes. Confederate flag on the same yes. bumper sticker. Yes. That was, <laughs> that, that was going to be my next point because it's braggadocio, isn't it? Mm. And, and you don't yeah. see it. You don't, you don't see bumper stickers much. And I, I can't remember when I last saw a bumper sticker in the UK. Because, oh, you know, pe people aren't interested in letting the rest of the world know their achievements. It's, um, it's an American thing. Hmm. Well, so that's mind-blowing. I thought that was everywhere, but now the, I know. The, the other thing that we don't do is attach large plastic scrotums dangling from the bottom oh, no. of the <laughs> Uh, do we do our country? In his own well, right, I've bragging that. that he's not bragging. Where do you buy the plastic <laughs> scrotum? Well, I've seen them in the. I've seen them in the. I don't the brag. Stops. Let me explain to you how good of a non-bragger I am. And our whole country doesn't do this. We're amazing non-braggers. Everyone here is the best non-bragging person <laughs> possible. It's amazing. We're, we're all very humble over here. We're the most humble. <laughs> Larry, Ty, Ty, I really this, like your. I like your response. My house. This is my house here. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, Eric, uh, Ty, I really like your response, and it really makes me think, why is this bothering me so much? And and I want to kind of put that aside because, you know, I think, you know, people who run kind of react to it maybe differently than people that don't. Um, but the, I think where I would really more interested in is like the 
the boardroom that came up with this idea and pitched it just again, forgetting if whether or not they put it on their car or not, the, the, the church is asking people to, it really seems deceitful. I mean, if they would have picked a different color or a different shape and just kind of mirrored the, the, the running culture, I'd get that. But I mean, it is exactly the same shape, color. It's got the black oval, everything. Oh, yeah. It just, it's so, uh, why didn't they just do a plus one? <laughs> yeah, it's an attack. It feels, in my head, it's the exact same thing religion has done to science, where when something works really well in science and it looks really good, religion's mm -hmm. like, we should do a thing like that. Let's just do yeah. that. The and now status. it's our thing. Mm -hmm. If we get it, if we do this enough time, it'll uh, effectively be a religious thing and not a God thing. Like chariots right. used to be the way you get from point A to point B. And then religion's like, we're going to make some songs about chariots. It's going to be us. So like, Next thing you know, you got, oh, chariot. And now it's a religious word. And I can't put it in my songs now. It's like, no, mm -hmm. I'm going to make, I'm going to make songs that deliberately have only Christian terms in it because I'm an atheist and I want people, I want to take it back. <laughs> That's my own little thing. But I'm saying like Lords used to be landowners. Now it's, Oh Lord, who are our fathers? Like, no, that used to be a job, a profession for a dude. That used to be, uh, unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> used to be a man who owned and, land. That's it. And, What's and up, in, John? In that time you had to worship him too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more or less. You had to give him money and ties and stuff like that. But it yeah. just translated into a religious thing. And I feel like culturally, that's what religion wants to do. They want to monopolize that stuff. Larry, what's up? I was just going to say that uh, religion is in the business of hijacking other good ideas. Yes. Yes. Like uh, they they hijack your history. I mean, if you join a religion, you end up studying, spending all your time uh, studying the history of the Jewish people, say, or um, you uh, you they hijack your family. You know, it's it's not if they don't believe in, in Jesus, then you come into our church and you call the priest father, yep. you call the, yes. the nun's sister. Yes. Uh, they hijack their holidays, you know, the, the solstices, um, they, they hijack marriage. They didn't even care about marriage up until around 1500. Then they exactly. started saying, we have we have to ordain a minister to to, mm -hmm. to marry you. And then and they they took mm -hmm. over morality. It's just one thing after another. They're all taking the way down over vaccines. The They're trying to make that a thing that we, we choose to do or not do. And you're right. So Larry, is, religion is the hijacks, word is the word hijacks, uh, just word one thing. Religion, religion hijacks other good ideas because when's the last time religions come out with a good idea, right? Like mm -hmm. it's been thousands of years and we yeah. still haven't had anything <clears throat> reasonable, good. We'll see that in our come out of religion. When we're on online arguing uh, our position against theirs, it's not long before they start using our position, turn it around and use it as theirs. Right. Like, uh, what proof do you have that there's no God? <laughs> you know, that type right. of thing. When we were asking the logical question, you know, when they say our God is real and he's all powerful and you have to follow him, we say, well, what proof do you have that he's real? Well, they'll, you know, 10 minutes later, they, they've used that, you know, what proof do you have that he doesn't? Like it counters that. Mm -hmm. Correct, and they know that you can't prove it a negative, so they use it anyway. I mean, George, particularly. Well, no, I just the, the word co-opted is came to mind. What do you think okay. of that? I have I have met people who are doctors, but in Bible studies, like they they went to Bible studies and they just kept going, and they got really good at the Bible studies and the stories, and they went to like a, a church. They went to a university that was owned by a church, mm -hmm. and the church gave them a doctorate degree and they put doctor in front of their names and yeah. they and i'm just like right. when i see that and it's like right. i will call you doctor whatever you are i'll do it but in my head i know that's not a real degree like i know you're not making anything useful you're mm -hmm. not building anything useful in fact you might be doing things detrimental what's up dread well i was gonna say that uh, the term physician is actually a protected term mm -hmm. and that way you know uh, say a chiropractor cannot call himself a physician he may call himself a doctor, uh, somebody, a doctor of homeopathy might call themselves a doctor, but they're not physicians. And, uh, you know, that's an important point that people need to realize when they're looking for health care is if, are you looking for a physician or are you looking for pseudoscience? Yeah. Yeah. Pseudo Cause anyone John. can be a doctor. John. And there's these diploma mills that are out there like Liberty university that, that's just handing them out. Yes. um oh, online and people who what's his name that guy who says calls himself the dino doctor um <laughs> ken hoven 
you know, he's been going oh, to himself a science doctor because he got a, a doctorate from this Liberty University diploma mm. mill. And he's not, he's not a doctor of science, but he, he uses that term every day. Yeah. Mm. I'm, come I'm a doctor of pastology. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's my, uh, that's my proof right there. Your yeah. third eye. Mm. My third eye. My past second eye. Noodle. My, my, my third noodle. <laughs> Don't get graphic. <laughs> right All right. John Richards, what's up? Yeah, I've got a couple of things to bring to this because there was a bit of a scandal over here some years ago when we had Dr. Gillian McKeith, who had a, a long running series on, I think it was Channel 4, uh, where she professed to be able to help people. And she had a different victim each week to lose weight. <laughs> And, and there was a diet involved, and it also involved analyzing the person's excreta. And so this had a sort of pseudo-medical sign to it, but then it was revealed that she bought her doctorate, and this was revealed by, uh, what's his name, Gold, um, I can't remember the, uh, Goldfarb or Goldstein, one of the um, researchers in, I think, Cambridge University, who was looking into this, and he actually found out where she got a doctor from, a doctorate from, and he bought one for his cat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a great way a to prove a point. We have hundred dollars. Made a great point because yeah. anyone well, I, could be a doctor. Oh, go for it, George. Go for it. I um, a couple of thoughts came to my mind. Give me a minute here. Uh, I. There, there's a fellow who does a an internet radio program. It's long running. It's been on for about twenty years. It's called You're talking about Head us, on... Larry. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm. Yeah. Well, this is called Head On Radio, and uh, it's on weekdays every day. And um, uh, the the fellow's name is uh, Bob Kincaid, who runs it. It's a long form talk format, and he he was trained for the ministry. And he likes to use the word, the term, the religion industry. And to me, I, I like the term because it it puts it in a in a business context. Let's, you know, and the, the second the second item that that really I, I'd like to share with the rest of you. This is a, this one's pretty funny. I have a friend who is a what I call a transmitter engineer. These people are very rare. Uh, this is a person who is capable of going into a radio station and doing surgery on a radio station. So he has worked for a syndicate of about 22 stations here in the South. And uh, a couple of these stations that are part of the syndicate carry um, ministers, you know, um, and it's it's a it's a format where they carry ministers like every half hour, every hour on Sunday, for instance. And these guys just get on and pit, make pictures to their flock. And of course, they make pictures for money. Oh. And um, and the problem that the syndicate has with these guys is that very often they don't pay their bills. <laughs> And they have to take them to court and, you know, and, and t tell them how many gold Cadillacs these guys are driving and why they're not paying their bills. And it's just, the pastors cry poor mouth to the judge. And it's, you know, it's, it's very funny. So they, have, they yeah. demand that these guys pay, pay up front for their airtime. So because they've got stiff too much. To top off what George is saying and to get back also to what Boudreaux was asking, like posers are inherently annoying, though, if anything, they're only embarrassing themselves to those who are already in the know. And I find that to be the justice enough because other people don't care what sticker you have on the back of your car. And like the people who don't run, they won't know the difference between 26.2 and 48.6. Or whatever. It's like, is that a Bible verse? I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going <laughs> right. on. But the runners who do run will see that and be like, that guy is an idiot. <laughs> the people who put the starkness on the car, that's the 27.2, will be like, I'm a good person. So like, in the end of the day, isn't everybody like, all right? Like, they're getting the justice from the people who know. And on their own right, they, they're happy and no one's getting hurt. So I'm like, seems like they're, they're, they're perpetrating their own poserness. And that's fine. Annoying still, but also fine. Dread, what's up? 
I, I was just thinking about a, a person I used to know who was a notorious uh, drunk driver. And he was of the mind that the sticker that, you know, uh, mad mothers against drunk driving, that he put one on the back of his car, believing that the cops would see that and think that he was <laughs> a non-drunk driver. And you know, you know what I mean? So signaling, yeah. signaling that he was a sober driver when in fact he just used it as a tool to what he believed. And he's weaving all cops. over the road, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so go on ahead and wear the t-shirts go on ahead and put your car do what you want but just know that you're doing in a community of varying levels of it of awareness of what you're doing right. and so you might fool yourself but you won't fool everybody and that's one of the consequences with working with a society and that's its own justice in its own right um guys how about it i think we're at the end of the show i think we had a pretty good discussion that was a really great jumping off point <laughs> eric do you have anything that you like to uh recommend that we check out before next week my friend and i don't um i've been pretty quiet here the last couple of weeks and uh, i'm glad to be back on the show so okay okay okay, okay. Udro, it sounds your name sounds like you should be from louisiana but you're yeah. in the uk right no you're he's not in the uk guy. he's in kentucky i'm kentucky. in kentucky i thought you were i've got it down here in my notes I, oh no no i i work at uk university of kentucky <laughs> oh <laughs> That explains it, Lucy. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, oh, anyway, that's so I need good. to apologize. I didn't include you on the intro, but there's Boudreau all the way from yeah, UK, you're Kentucky. Kentucky. You're so Boudreau, it's all very, UK. very European. That, that's awesome. That is blatant misrepresentation. <laughs> and I love his English accent. He's just spot on. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's. Can we touch back on that subject? Because I think that's interesting. In the Boudreaux, I think sometimes we could be posing without realizing it because you, I'm sure, have a shirt that says UK on it, right? Oh, yeah. That if you went to where John Richards lives at, he'd be like, why the hell do you have a shirt with my country's icon? It's like, no, 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 this is my thing. And it's this whole thing from the school that I come to from. It's like, that's our letters. Like, at that point, I wouldn't make sense for John to get angry, right? Because like, he knows what country he's from. And he knows that whatever mindset you have for the contextualizing those two letters is totally fine. So he's going to let you be happy. He's going to do his own thing. And I feel like that's how we should just treat those stickers. Yep. Know only, where they're from. Yeah. And don't get upset about them, but know where they're from and be able to call I, I guess them. my only complaint with that is if I go to the UK wearing UK, uh -huh. I'm not, it's not like <laughs> I'm getting credit for something there. I mean, maybe I can get a deal on a beer and a, <laughs> a pub, but, uh, you need to have a sticker on your shirt. When you go to the UK. Yeah, I well, changed my which, notes to U of K now. So. Uh, <laughs> I, well, I just feel like it's numbing the effect of the sticker now. It's like if anyone can just put on the sticker, it just I feel like, well, there we go. Now we have to come up with a whole new system. There goes the neighborhood, right? They just peed in the Cheerios. So <laughs> yeah. Oh. Dread, is there anything that you would recommend we check out before next? Yeah, week? sure. Uh, well, you can check out my uh, YouTube channel where I live stream this on Sundays at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Nice. Uh, my Pirate is spelled M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E. And I'm up to 98 subscribers. Two more, my friends. Bring it on. Bring it on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> uh so let's see, uh, John Richards, anything you'd recommend that we check out before the... Yeah, sure. I'd like, uh, like you to check out my Free Thought Productions YouTube channel. I'm really pleased with the, the latest Global Atheist News that went out last night because it's got... Um, we have a number of correspondents from different parts of the world. And so this includes um, our latest... Islamic affairs correspondent, Nuria Khan, she does a bit, and including which there is a clip from uh, Harris Sultan's show in which he reveals that uh, masturbation is now halal. <laughs> is now what? Halal? Halal. halal. Is that uh, forbidden? No, no, it, no, it's it's so it's, a, it's a Muslim equivalent of kosher. I I don't well, know how yeah, to. It, okay. it, it, how, it, no, it's acceptable. Oh, time. Halal, halal is uh, acceptable. Uh, I see. Yeah. Halal yeah. allowable. Okay, I'll have to remember it that way. Yes, that would be a good way. <laughs> halalable. <laughs> That's a pop mute, guys. I had this weird. Oh, I have this weird thing I want to bring up, but we're going to throw it to George Brown. 
do you have anything you'd recommend that we check out before next week, my friend? I have nothing to recommend. Okay. Okay. No new coffee Guys. brands. No, I'm, I've given up coffee for, for the duration. I'm having a little bit of a um, d digestive ailment right now. And sure. so I'm, I'm off coffee and it's weird. Mm. Nice, nice, nice. More beer. I, I think, mean, it, I think it, coffee is the weirdest, you know, psycho nootropic, whatever you want to call it, that we just <laughs> contextualize as normal in society. Like when I see a 12 year old talking about coffee, I'm like, I don't like guys, this is weird. This is like, well, well do you, do you remember the, uh, the Pope, uh, having blessed one bean made all, all coffee good because it was so it. good that it had to be a sin. So yeah. he blessed one bean and it made all beans. <laughs> it reminds me of those really old episodes of I love Lucy, where Lucille ball has baby Ricky in her hands and she's smoking a cigarette and blowing <laughs> smoke right in the baby's face. Right. It's like back then they oh, didn't boy. know. And I feel like we should know by now, but the coffee industry is like, don't tell them. It's like, we already know. It's like, well, we're not going to say anything. If you're not going to say, it. I'm saying things now. Yeah. There's my, there's my thing. Um, guys, ASL has, or American Sign Language is working on new terms for atheists, humanists, secularists, uh, and um, skeptic, because those words don't exist in in asl proper a lot of the oh, words okay. in english don't exist in sign language and a lot of sign language words don't exist in english and so there's some mixing around trying to make the words compatible with each other and i didn't like the sign for atheist before it was not believe person and i'm like there's so much more to wow. atheist than just a person who doesn't believe sure. right now it's not no beliefs or none beliefs but like i still feel like we're working on it i think when we i think i like the a and and circling it like with the uh, the american atheist logo i think that works really well of all the ones that are being proposed that's my most favorite one so far but mm -hmm. i'm going to keep you guys updated maybe we can make it a show cool. in the future but larry Sounds what's good. up i oh. you know atheism i don't know what it is tell me what it is <laughs> i must know or say hey plug anything else you want my friend it's it's we're here for fun my right. cat's trash in no, a bag. Atheism. I do have a book about that. It's called Atheism, What's It All About? It's available on Amazon. You can also go to digitalfreethought.com and uh, learn about it there. There's a whole blog there with our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Um, thank you for joining, by the way, the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this show at Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and on podcasts everywhere. Just check for the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. If you have questions for the show, you can send them to us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or letschatse at gmail.com, and we will answer them in the future shows. If you're having trouble leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help at recoveringfromreligion.org. They have people that can give you the aid you need. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Great show, everybody. Cool. Thanks, guys. Well